Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, a man is shot overnight while in the parking lot of a northeast side apartment complex. We have details on his condition. More than 250,000 American lives now lost to COVID-19. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze, the latest on the coronavirus emergency coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, 54 degrees right now, about 10 degrees warmer than yesterday. Uh, there's fog in some parts of the city. We're checking with Mike right now. And good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is November 19th, and it looks like fog is going to be a problem for quite a bit of folks this morning. Yeah, a little dangerous for drivers and a little more human for you when you step outside. Yeah, it's not quite as chilly out there for sure. Mike is here with an update on the humidity and that fog. And do we have an advisory this nope, morning? Nothing yet. Okay. Uh, that, that could change. You said you saw fog, right? Oh, yeah, quite a bit. Okay, uh, I, I didn't see anything here in the downtown area as of yet, but take a look at uh, live cam, same uh, shot we started off with, and this is from Brook City Base looking up to the north, and you can see that kind of haze hanging over town and the kind of the flare around all of the uh, the streetlights around there. Uh, visibility at the airport is still pretty good. New Braunfels, three quarters of a mile, a little bit around Casterville. Pleasanton, Stinson, uh, Bernie Stage going up I-10. And again, these numbers can change basically at the drop of a hat. So that's what we will have to watch out for. More fog going down 37 in toward Beeville and a little bit out to, toward the west out around uh, Uvalde. But as always, it's going to get thicker as we approach sunrise. Temperatures, yep, about 10 degrees or more. I mean, look at that. We're in the upper 50s in parts of the hill country right now. And, of course, those dew points definitely went up. Mold is on the low side from yesterday's count. Temperatures will stay uh, just basically about steady. I had put 56 in earlier this morning when we were hovering right around 56 degrees. We had dropped down, went back up now. Uh, last hour, we were down to uh, 53, now back up to 54. So it's just going to be just about steady. And then 78 for high temperature today. Close to what it was yesterday, but more humid out there. And get used to it. It's going to be sticking around through the weekend. We've got a couple of fronts. So things have changed a little bit as far as the front situation next week. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Anything going on yet, sir? Well, it might have an accident here. Uh, 37 southbound at uh, New Braunfels Avenue. No details on it yet, but this accident did come out. Trying to get more on it, but keep that in mind if you are going southbound 37 at New Braunfels. All right, trans guy time. 35 at Pine looking good right now, but we have this stalled 18 wheeler there on the right lane of the southbound lanes 151 and 410 getting a little foggy in that area and 35 at 37 looking smooth mark stiff back to you thank you nick new this morning san antonio police trying to figure out what led up to a shooting that sent a man to the hospital late last night sapd says the shooting happened just before 10 in the parking lot of the iron horse valley apartments on the northeast side of town Police say a man and woman were in the parking lot when a person driving a gray car drove up and shot the man in the leg. The man and woman then drove to a different location on Creekmore Drive to get help. The victim was taken to the hospital in stable condition. The nation's coronavirus death toll has now surpassed 250,000, according to Johns Hopkins University. A growing list of states and cities are putting new restrictions in place as hospitals across the nation are overwhelmed. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest this from Washington. One quarter of a million American lives now lost to COVID-19 in the pandemic showing no signs of slowing down. Right now we are in a absolutely dangerous situation. This is not crying wolf. The U.S. averaging 160,000 new cases a day in the past week, while hospitalizations remain at an all-time high. Frontline workers, many separated from their own families, trying not to give up hope. Having my patient call their family member before we intubate for the last time. And then the silence that follows after is, it's really hard. Across the nation, new restrictions to try to slow the spread of the virus. New York City announcing it will close public schools, joining a growing number of districts reverting back to virtual learning. States like Oregon, Michigan, and Minnesota issuing new limitations on businesses and public gatherings as governors urge Americans to rethink Thanksgiving plans. You know what love is on Thanksgiving? I love you so much, and I'm so thankful for you that I'm not going to see you. 
In much needed good news, Pfizer announced it will apply for emergency authorization for its COVID-19 vaccine in the coming days, saying final results in its clinical trial showed the vaccine was 95% effective. Between this and the Moderna vaccine, it looks like we have two vaccines that are going to end up being very effective. Once they are widely deployed, it's going to make a huge difference in bringing the pandemic under control. President-elect Biden is warning President Trump's refusal to start the transition process could delay efforts to distribute a vaccine. The Trump administration is still refusing to share critical information about the pandemic response. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And as far as coronavirus cases here at home, the seven day average now at 295, which is a slight increase from the last report. Three new deaths were also reported. In our hospitals, 434 COVID-19 patients are hospitalized, an increase of 12 patients. That includes 68 patients from El Paso. Three new deaths were also reported. Metro Health also reporting 139 patients are in the intensive care unit and 73 are on ventilators. The need for blood is still very high right now. South Texas Blood and Tissue Center said most uh, places have less than a two day supply. A type O blood is most critically needed today. 541 people have signed up to donate, but the center says much more is needed. If you'd like to donate, visit SouthTexasBlood.org. All donors will receive a $10 HEB gift card and will be tested for COVID antibodies. There's also a need for convalescent plasma from former COVID-19 patients. And time now is 436 and 54 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, actress Lori Loughlin's fashion designer husband set to report to jail for his role in the college admission scandal. New details on what he is facing in prison. Plus, the government has a brand new tool to help protect people from getting foodborne illnesses. And outside with live cam, tough to, tough to see the downtown area right now due to all the fog over the area. You can kind of make out the Alamo Dome there on the uh, lower right-hand portion of your screen. Mike's forecast coming up, and we'll see how the roads are looking once again with Nick. In your morning headlines, President-elect Joe Biden continues to gain a lead over President Trump. He now leads the popular vote by nearly 6 million votes. This comes as President Trump has escalated his insistence that he won the election. His campaign and supporters are continuing, continuing the legal fight to stop or delay results from being certified, even as the president refuses to concede. Some Republicans want him to give Biden access to intelligence briefings. Biden says Trump's delaying of the transition could set back efforts to fight the coronavirus and distribute a vaccine. This morning, Australia's Defense Force is recommending an investigation into alleged unlawful killings in Afghanistan between 2009 and 2013. The report shows that there is, quote, credible information regarding deeply disturbing allegations, end quote, of a total of 39 alleged killings involving prisoners, farmers, or other civilians. According to the chief of the Defense Force, none of the crimes were described as being conducted in the heat of battle. He recommended that the federal police should investigate 19 people from the Australian Special Forces over 36 of the alleged war crimes. Now, the chief of the Defense Force also apologized to Afghanistan, the victims' families, and the Australian people. The FDA has a new way of getting information out about outbreaks of foodborne illnesses. The agency said it'll start publishing a weekly update on all outbreak cases it is investigating. The updates will include the stages of each investigation. Before that, Americans waited for public health advisories or recalls to learn about concerns regarding food products. The FDA hopes the new reports will allow the public to learn about outbreaks earlier and more frequently. The FDA investigation team called the Coordinated Outbreak Response and Evaluation Network will be publishing those updates. And time now is 441 and 55 degrees. I have some heavy duty things to take care of around the yard like cutting tree limbs. Up next, which chainsaws are the best ones to get the job done a little easier? Also next, new details on the husband of actress Lori Laughlin, who is set to report to prison today for his role in the college admission scandal. And welcome back. Time now is 444. The husband of actress Lori Laughlin is reporting to prison today in the college admission scandal. ABC's Kaylee Hartung has the details in today's GMA First Look. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, actress Lori Loughlin's fashion designer husband, Massimo Giannulli, set to report to jail for his role in the Varsity Blues college admission scandal. Are you going to fight these charges? The 57 year old is the fashion designer behind the popular Massimo clothing brand. He was sentenced to five months behind bars and ordered to pay a quarter million dollar fine after pleading guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit fraud. The couple accused of paying half a million dollars to Varsity Blues alleged mastermind Rick Singer to get their two daughters, Olivia Jade and Isabella, into USC, staging them both as rowers to recruit them for the team, though neither ever participated in the sport. On Tuesday, two days before reporting to jail, Giannulli was spotted in Beverly Hills, sporting a new look, the shaved head and growing beard, a far cry from his previously clean cut image. And coming up at 7 a.m., new details on what he's facing in prison. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. The right tools for yard cleanup. You've got a lawnmower, maybe a string trimmer, and a leaf blower. Well, what about adding a chainsaw to the arsenal? 12 on your size, Marilyn Moritz has test results to help you find one that's up for the task. Whether it's cleaning up after a storm or chopping firewood, a chainsaw can make it quick work, but they are serious tools that require some skill. It can be dangerous to use a chainsaw above waist height, like to cut limbs that are over your head. Those are jobs best left to the pros. But if you've a lot of fallen limbs in your yard, a chainsaw can be a really handy tool. Consumer Reports fit several through rigorous testing. They even timed how fast each could cut through a 10-inch oak beam. But fast isn't great if it's not safe. So they looked at safety features. One of them is a cover for the blade to protect you from getting cut when the saw isn't in use. We also look for a chain break, which is this device here. It's designed to engage and stop the blade from spinning if you get kickback while you're cutting. You can see the difference between a chainsaw that reduces kickback and one that's harder to handle. The biggest surprise they found, how much battery powered chainsaws have improved. This $350 Ego was named the best of the batteries. For smaller jobs, they recommend this $250 Ryobi. It's almost as fast, but has a shorter cutting bar. Batteries do have to be recharged, so a gas sob may be more your style. This $320 John Sarid got their top rating. And for lighter duty, they suggest this $250 still chainsaw. And with any chainsaw, don't forget the protective gear. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Mike Ostrage is watching with keen interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Anything he's staring at the screen. Large power tool. Do you own a chainsaw, Mike? No, actually, I don't. I, really? I, when I have to uh -huh. trim limbs, I use a reciprocating saw. So. Uh -huh. Christmas idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll take or one. Mike. Well, actually, for Bonnie, for Mike. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice surprise. <laughs> Let's check traffic real quick at 447. How's it looking, Nick Salise? Uh, well, Steph, uh, it looks good right now. So it looks like this accident on 37 South New Braunfels is actually a stalled vehicle on the right shoulder. So not blocking the lanes, but still, they're on the shoulder. Keep in mind, especially with this fog coming in, please be very careful. Watch your speed when you're going down 37. Also have a breakdown vehicle here. This is going to be southbound 35 at FM 482 near New Braunfels. It's an 18-wheeler stuck in between two barriers. Uh, keep that in mind as well if you are heading from New Braunfels back down towards San Antonio. All right, now let's uh, take a look here at um, 35 at Ritterman. Look at that foggy already, but still looks good. Uh, traffic flowing very smoothly there. 37 at Jones, north and southbound. That's looking good as well. Thank you, Nick. Hey, Thank back you. to change. Have you ever seen, you know, the protective gear, those chaps <clears throat> that you get? And you think, well, wait a minute, you, you know, a chainsaw could cut through those. They are designed that if the, the chainsaw hits them, they shred and just all the threads come out and just gum the thing up and stop it immediately. R oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that's, well, that's, how, a, that's how they're designed to that's work. That's a good safety feature. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder what something like that runs, right? Got this probably pretty pricey, but those are people that professionals deal with chainsaws all the time. No, I mean, even if you get one at home, uh -huh. they, uh, they always recommend you should huh. get those things hmm. if it hits it, because yeah, they just- Keep that in mind, Stephanie. Okay, so I, I need to get the protective <laughs> gear, you get the chainsaw. Deal. Okay. Wow, <laughs> okay. It's a good Thursday if I'm getting some more power tools for my coworkers. Thank you very much. Hey, great looking picture. This was beautiful yesterday. And yes, thank you, God, for this beautiful day in uh, Bulverde. It was fantastic out there. We had a couple of clouds still uh, hanging around throughout the day, and I think we'll keep a few of those around today. And we've got a lot of low clouds and uh, 
Wow, is this the picture looking up to the north? I think it is, and it looks like the clouds have kind of settled down. As a matter of fact, so just at the top of this newscast at 430, visibility was at 10 miles. It has dropped now to about a 16th of a mile, basically a couple of hundred yards out there at the airport, half mile Bernie, and uh, still three quarters mile at New Braunfels. But all that fog has definitely started to thicken up here in and around town, and that's pretty much the thickest which is centered right on San Antonio, a little bit down around Beeville. And last check, there weren't any advisories posted as of yet, but you just got to watch it. And with the fog, the roads are obviously going to be on the, the damp side this morning. So 55 here in town. Temperatures have been kind of fluctuating between 52, 56 in the past couple of hours, about 10 to almost 15 degrees warmer than what it was at this time yesterday. Uh, those are the, the dew point temperatures. And the dew points are going to be staying on the higher side through the weekend as expected. They'll drop down a little bit on Monday. We we're talking about that first front that's going to be moving on through here, but it doesn't look like it's going to quite have the, the impact, even though it was not going to be a strong front, not quite the impact that it initially looked like. However, by the middle part of the week, it's now looking like that might be a little bit more of a front coming on through here Tuesday into Wednesday, and that would then cool us back down again to at least a normal low temperature by Thanksgiving morning. Highs are still going to be where you'd expect right around the low 70s. And water vapor, first of all, we've got this nice dark area on top of us. So once we get rid of uh, some of these clouds and you get those holes in the clouds, gonna have some beautiful blue skies up there. Also take note that everything is still moving basically straight west to east. That's what we call a zonal pattern, which means you have very consistent temperatures or a little bit on the above normal side. And also you don't get much as far as any uh, rain chances around here, which that's still the, the situation. Maybe a couple of sprinkles by Monday, but it's not looking good. 74 degrees today at noon. We'll be dealing with the clouds and some fog this morning and then partly cloudy skies. We we'll call it a mixture of sunshine and clouds throughout the day. 78 for a high temperature, so warm and more humid. And the humidity is going to be sticking around the next couple of days. So we'll be dealing with some morning fog and mist tomorrow again. And Saturday, Sunday, a lot of clouds around here. A shower is possible. Maybe a couple of them on Monday, a little bit cooler as far as low temperatures on Monday. Not much though, and high temperatures will still be just mid 70s, but that next front eh, Tuesday into Wednesday, and that should cool us down though for Thursday morning. Thursday, next Thursday, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving yeah, week from, week from today. So wow. just kind of back down to normal readings by then. So. Well, that'll be good. The, yeah, mm -hmm. this, this year has bogged down in places and then sped by in others. Yep. And now we're in the speed by part. Yep. <laughs> yes, it's going by very fast. 452, 56 degrees. And up next, the next film in the Scream franchise officially has a name. Can you guess what it is? Scream? I think so. <laughs> or, or past tense, Screamed? Screamed. <laughs> Pick three numbers 066, six, Fireball 8, Daily 4, number 6280, Fireball 0. Cash 5, 14, 17, 21, 23, 33. And a lot of Texas, 19, 22, 27, 36, 39, 46. And your Powerball numbers, 4, 5, 17, 43, 52, Powerball 5, Power Play 2. Good luck. Latest Scream movie is coming to uh, hopefully a theater near you. Plus, a hit drama returns tonight for its third season on ABC. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Uh. Stepped out of bail, I did a diddy bop. Rapper Tory Lanez has pleaded not guilty in the shooting of fellow rap star Megan Thee Stallion. Lanez entered the plea Wednesday in Los Angeles through his lawyer. He was not in court. He's accused of shooting her in the foot outside a party in the Hollywood Hills in July and faces the possibility of more than 20 years in prison if convicted. Megan Thee Stallion's performing this Sunday at the American Music Awards on ABC. And she's the most nominated woman at this year's AMAs. Like scary movies. Uh -huh. The next film in the Scream franchise officially has a name and it'll be called Scream. Creator Kevin Williamson made the reveal on Twitter saying filming is finished, but you won't see it until January 2022. Kaylee Cuoco's buzzy new series, The Flight Attendant, just dropped early on HBO Max, episode one, up now, a week ahead of its planned Thanksgiving Day premiere. Next week, two more episodes will be available. And tonight, I want to do the vows. Tonight on ABC, the hit drama A Million Little Things returns for season three. Last season left off with a car crash cliffhanger. Tonight's episode picks up with the aftermath of that. Then next week, the show will be off for Thanksgiving. 
And happy birthday today to Star Wars star and Oscar-nominated Marriage Story actor Adam Driver. He's 37, while Oscar and multiple Emmy Award-winning actress Allison Janney is 61. I didn't stay home making apple brown Bettys. No, I made you a champion. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Both great actors. Yes. If you're ever interested, look up uh, Adam interviews with Adam Driver talking about being in the Marine Corps. Oh, yeah, that's pretty and interesting. And how it prepared him for a life of acting. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. And then, like, looking back at the research, I was like, oh, wow. And now he, I think he wants to put something together to help other people in the military if they have an interest in He does. Yes, well. yes, he does. I've heard that. Three till right now, 55 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, even as President Donald Trump refuses to concede, more Republicans are now calling for him to grant uh, Biden access to intelligence briefings. Well, as you want to avoid the crowds this holiday season, Google has a new feature that you might find helpful and what works coming up in Tech Bytes. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this hour, a man is shot in both legs during an incident on the south side overnight. We have details from police. Plus, as President-elect Joe Biden strengthens his lead in the 2020 election, President Donald Trump intensifying his legal fight to stop or delay results from being certified. Outside with live cam, if you get push alerts from Mike Osterhage and our weather team, he just sent out one that said the fog is getting thicker and there is the proof. We'll check in with Mike in just a second and then we'll see how the roads are looking with Nick. Good morning. It is Thursday. It is November 19th. Let's go straight to Mike and get an update on this fog situation. It looks like it's here to stay for a while, Mike. Yes, indeed. And what's interesting is 430 when we started off, visibility was reported at the airport at 10 miles and within about uh, 10 to 15 minutes it had dropped to basically a couple of hundred yards and there's going to be some mist on the roads as well. 55 degrees temperatures are uh, across the board, say about 10 to 15 degrees warmer than what it was yesterday. We are now on the above normal side and look at the dew point at the bottom there. That's at 55 100% humidity and that with some other factors is why we are seeing some of this fog. It is going to be another warm one today, well above normal, up in the upper 70s again, and you're going to feel the humidity as well. The aquifer did uh, drop down, a excuse me, went up a little bit in yesterday's reading, one-tenth of a foot, and the allergens, just a low amount of mold out there. All right, visibility, it's uh, kind of a, a guessing game, see how it has changed. It did not change out there at the airport, though. Just uh, six hundredths of a mile, which equates to just a couple of hundred yards. Quarter mile at Randolph, one mile Bernie and New Braunfels has actually dropped down a little bit as well. And it's starting to thicken up around Castroville as well as Pleasanton. And it looks like just kind of widening out a little bit that obviously the thickest fog is centered on our area right there, basically around the metropolitan area and Bear County. And it may get better at times. It may get worse. And it may be one of those situations, too, where you were driving down, turn the corner and basically run into a wall of fog. So that'll be sticking around for the next few hours. So warm and humid, the patchy fog around here this morning and then We'll have kind of partly cloudy skies today and still warm and humid. More of that over the weekend. A couple of showers are possible on Sunday. Not very likely. Maybe some mist and drizzle in the mornings and a little bit better chance for a shower or two by Monday. As far as fronts, I think we're going to have to wait for anything kind of sort of significant until the middle part of next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solis, any problems yet, sir? Now, just that breakdown, Mike, we had a couple of stalled vehicles all around, you know, the area, but uh, this one here has been broken down. It's an 18 wheeler uh, right there, southbound I-35 at FM 42. This is near New Braunfels. It's an 18 wheeler that got stalled in between two barriers. Keep that in mind if you're heading in the, that, that direction. All right, 35 at Pine right now, uh, 151 at 410. Foggy, please be careful when you're driving today. Uh, go the speed limit. Use those headlights. Just please be careful. 35 at 37 downtown flowing smoothly and 35 at Walls on the northeast side looking good as well. Mark Steph, back to you. Thank you, Nick. San Antonio police had to track down a man who was shot in both legs late last night. It happened in the 5400 block of South Florida Street on the city's south side. Police say an argument led to that shooting and that during the investigation, it took officers a while to find the victim. And when they did, they say the man had been shot in both legs but was not cooperating. He was last reported in stable condition at Bamsey. This morning, President Trump's legal team continues to launch challenges in several battleground states. As ABC's Elizabeth Schulze reports, they are running out of time and options. 
President Trump's chances to challenge the election appear to be dwindling by the hour. A judge in Arizona says he'll rule on a case this morning that could delay the state's certification of ballots. Republicans are requesting a redo of a hand recount in Maricopa County, the state's largest. But the judge expressing skepticism before the ruling, reportedly saying he's, quote, having a hard time understanding why the lawsuit was filed more than two weeks after the election. Also today, Georgia will announce results of its statewide audit. So far, uncounted votes have been found in four counties, netting President Trump more than 1,000 votes, but not nearly enough to overtake President-elect Biden's lead in that state. But we have not have enough evidence to say that they reached the level of 13,000 or so. And as President Trump refuses to concede, more Republicans are not now calling for him to grant Biden access to intelligence briefings. The president is contesting the election, and I would urge him to give intel briefings to, uh, to Joe Biden. Staffers at the Health and Human Services Department have been ordered not to talk to Biden's team and to report any outreach that's been made until the General Services Administration officially determines who won the election. Biden says Trump's delaying of the transition could set back efforts to fight the coronavirus and distribute a vaccine. There's a whole lot of things that are just we just don't have available to us, which unless it's made available soon, we're going to be behind by weeks or months. Being... That warning coming as Biden heard emotional stories from frontline health workers. Do you know that I have not been tested yet and I have been on the front lines in the ICU since February? You're kidding me. No. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, a San Antonio boy dealing with the loss of both parents who died of COVID-19. Adon and Mariah Gonzalez died after contracting the virus. Their deaths just months apart. They leave behind four-year-old Raiden Gonzalez, now being raised by his grandma. Rosie Salinas tells us that Adon was the first to test positive for the virus back in June. He died that same month. Her daughter, Mariah, tested positive last month and died days after she was rushed to the hospital. Salinas says she never thought her young grandson would have to deal with so much grief at an early age. She says Raiden was everything his parents ever dreamed of. They were the perfect parents. I mean, they were just a very loving family. You know, they were always making sure, you know, to do everything for him. There were now both parents are gone. Raiden is just days away from his fifth birthday. Salinas is planning a birthday parade later this month. She says although it won't bring back Raiden's parents, she hopes it will bring back some of his joy. Two military hospitals in San Antonio are participating in an AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine trial. Brook Army Medical Center and Wolfert Hall Ambulatory Surgical Center are among five Department of Defense locations chosen to participate in AstraZeneca's Phase 3 trial. The study is working to enroll a total of 1,000 people. So far, about 100 people have volunteered. Researchers are looking for people at higher risk of getting COVID-19. They'll have a blood draw, they'll have a, a nasopharyngeal sample uh, obtained, and they will also receive either the investigational vaccine or placebo. The team will monitor participants over the course of a two-year period. And our coverage of the pandemic continues online. More doctors and nurses may still be needed as Texas rapidly accelerates towards 8,000 COVID-19 patients in the hospital. Governor Greg Abbott is scheduled to speak in Lubbock today and give an update on the pandemic in Texas. 508, 55 degrees. And still ahead, we're gonna tell you how much Apple will now have to pay for older iPhones in the new battery gate settlement. Why some grocery stores are opting to put robot janitors to work instead of people. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, there's some fog in areas of San Antonio. I didn't see it when I was driving in, but now we're starting to see it here in the downtown area. It's 55 degrees. We will check in with Mike after the break. 511, welcome back to GMSA. Companies around the world have had to pivot during the pandemic, and some big brand stores are taking a more futuristic approach to things. As Max Massey shows us, Sam's Club is putting robot janitors in all of its stores during the pandemic. Buying groceries has looked a lot different in 2020, but if you're a Sam's Club member, your in-store experience is about to look a whole lot different no matter where you live. We're talking robots. Soon, every Sam's Club will have a robot to scrub the store floors. In partnership with BrainCorp, an artificial intelligence company, the membership-only warehouse chain will distribute 372 new autonomous floor scrubbers 
to all their stores this coming fall. Now, Sam's Club, which is owned by Walmart, has already deployed hundreds of these robotic scrubbers. So with the addition of 372 new robots, the company will soon have a scrubber in each of their locations. It'll also implement one of the Brain Corps accessories that will allow them to analyze shelf inventory. This move comes at a time when shoppers are looking for grocery experiences that involve less and less human contact. As grocers look for ways to reduce pressure on store workers and increase efficiency. Many grocers have found that their needs are shifting with more shoppers stocking up in stores and ordering groceries online. They believe robots and artificial intelligence offer solutions that can help bring down costs and improve store operations. Sam Club is not the first of its kind to implement this kind of technology in the store. Walmart wants its store employees to help customers instead of mopping floors and unloading boxes. So it increasingly is turning to robots to fill those tasks. Last year, Walmart announced by February of 2021, they expect to have autonomous floor scrubbers in 1,860 of its more than 4,700 stores. It will also have robots that scan shelf inventory at 350 stores, and there will be robots at 1,700 stores that automatically scan boxes as they come off delivery trucks and sorts them by department onto conveyor belts. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 513 and 55 degrees for now. But well, still ahead on GMSA, we'll tell you how much Apple had to pay after the company was accused of slowing down older iPhones on purpose. Plus how Google Maps is making it a little easier to visit your favorite grocery stores and coffee shops during the most popular days of shopping around the holidays. Has asthma pushed you into a smaller life? Are your asthma treatments just not enough? Then see what could open up for you with Visenra. It is not a steroid or inhaler. It is not a rescue medicine or for other eosinophilic conditions. It's an add-on injection for people 12 and up with asthma driven by eosinophils. Nearly seven out of 10 adults with asthma may have elevated eosinophils. Visenra is designed to target and remove eosinophils, a key cause of asthma. It helps to prevent asthma attacks, improve breathing, and can reduce the need for oral steroids like prednisone. Visenra may cause allergic reactions. Get help right away if you have swelling of your face, mouth, and tongue, or trouble breathing. Don't stop your asthma treatments unless your doctor tells you to. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection or your asthma worsens. Headache and sore throat may occur. Could you be living a bigger life? Ask an asthma specialist about Facenra. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple's new battery gate settlement. The company has agreed to pay $113 million to settle state claims it intentionally slowed down older iPhones. Apple says it slowed down the phones to save battery life, but the states claim Apple was trying to force people into buying new phones. Just in time for the holidays, Google Maps has issued a handy guide detailing the best and worst times to avoid crowds in public places. One example, Mondays at 8 a.m. are best for socially distant grocery shopping. Saturdays from noon to three are the worst. And finally, Wonder Woman fans are gearing up for an unprecedented in it debut the sequel will be released in theaters and it will stream on hbo max at the same time starting christmas day wonder woman 1984 was supposed to come out in june but it was sidelined by the pandemic those are your tech bites a lot I, of movies i remember <laughs> seeing the trailer for that mm -hmm. during the pandemic and it Me just too. it would never come out never come out kind of like tenant it took forever, forever for tenant to come yes. out yes actually i, I kind of remember seeing previews i think before the pandemic for mm -hmm. wonder woman yeah and i was super excited because of the, the music and 1984 i was like yay and mm -hmm. it's finally here because <laughs> supposedly the 80s are hip now <laughs> 518, See, let's Nick? check traffic. Here's Nick. <laughs> they are Nick. Yeah, it's all about the 90s. All right, here ah. we go. <laughs> okay, a lot of green on the screen here. Things looking good in the city. Uh, just please be careful driving out there. I'm going to tell you it's a little bit foggy right now. Um, still dealing with this. This is a breakdown here of an 18-wheeler on southbound IH35 at FM42 up in New Braunfels. And I do have transguide footage of this, but it is foggy. Just, I can't, you can't actually see the 18-wheeler break broke down there, but it is there. Trust me. All right, 37 in Jones North and southbound looking good still 35 at main downtown look at that flowing smoothly looking good now it's now is the time to go to work and 281 at winding way that looks kind of spooky
Yeah, a lot of fog in that shot, definitely. Yep, thank you, Nick. All we're missing from Mike's KSAT Connect picture is uh, E.T., Elliot, and a bicycle. It looks like the beginning of, of a movie yeah. studio theme thing. It, it sort of does. It's the uh, waxing crescent moon. I was going to say, speaking of the uh, 80s being hip again, good thing you saved all those clothes. So, me too. So, anyway. Um, you still haven't worn your members' only jacket since 88? Okay, <laughs> that aside, that was a very... Uh, the. Not necessarily the design of it, uh -huh. but it was a, a good lightweight type windbreaker. Yeah. Right. So another reason it's to accept it. It's very popular so, right But now. I didn't. No, I don't have it. My Aww. wife's going to throw things out. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, beautiful uh, waxing crescent moon. And this is going to be full on the uh, the 30th, so a week from, uh, week from Monday. Yeah, as far as the fog is concerned, it has definitely gotten thicker. I mean, it really thickened up. Uh, basically in about 10 minutes as far as the, the visibility. And Port Assay has now dropped to a third of a mile. Same thing at Randolph, zero now at Pleasanton, half mile Stinson, quarter mile in New Braunfels. So all around basically Bear County is just socked in with fog as of right now. A little bit better off to the west, but things will definitely be changing and it's probably gonna start to spread a little bit more as, uh, as the morning rolls on. So watch it around Honda because Castroville and Honda usually get some, you get some fairly thick fog. Beeville also at zero visibility. This was pretty much expected because the humidity just surged back on in here. You know, yesterday morning we started off nice and cool and crisp, but forget about that for at least a good five, six days or so. Dew point temperatures will remain in the 60s, so we'll probably have some mist and drizzle and some fog to deal with again tomorrow morning and maybe just kind of a, you know, sort of a, a humid, murky kind of a, a weekend, if you will, as far as the mornings are concerned. We get a bit of a drop by Monday. There's that first front we've been talking about, but this one doesn't look like it's going to be quite have quite as much oomph as it had initially looked like that now looks like it's going to be uh, on Wednesday with a neck another front that will move on through here that should get rid of some of the humidity and at least cool us back down to normal readings by uh, starting off by uh, Thursday morning by Thanksgiving morning as far as the low clouds they're not showing up yet and it's kind of hard to see on this uh, infrared satellite picture there's a few of them as you can see right here if you watch closely there's the clouds starting to uh, show up, some of those low clouds around the country. Uh, the big thing to notice is the fact that everything's moving just about straight west to east, and that's that zonal air pattern. So that doesn't really bring about any significant changes at all. One thing, though, that has changed in the past couple of days is the fact that most of the country now is above freezing, with the exception up there to the, uh, the northeast and the Atlantic seaboard. But that's going to be changing as well. So the upper level wind lines, this main flow, there's kind of the dividing line right there where those lines are packed a little closer together. That stays up there to the north, pretty much straight west to east all the way through the weekend. So our weather's not going to be changing in through the weekend. And Sunday into Monday, like I said, that little bit of a front moves through, but doesn't have a lot of upper level support to it at all. And then this low is going to try and develop. That is what is going to be bringing that next front through Looks like Wednesday and then we get that drier air and somewhat cooler temperatures Thursday morning of next week. 74 degrees, partly cloudy skies today at noon. We'll still have, I think, a, a lot of stubborn clouds hanging around here and then 78 for a high temperature today. So still anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees above normal. Tomorrow morning we'll do it all over again. It's going to be very warm, very humid, mist. Yeah, that's the thing to watch out for again this morning too with the fog is damp roads possibility. Warm, humid weekend. Little less humidity Monday and lesser humidity by probably late Wednesday and Thanksgiving. We were talking Christmas decorations earlier this week. I got my tree up last night. Oh, you did. Oh, good it's job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mike, you? Not yet on the tree. Not yet on the tree. Yeah, I'm still working on the outside. Then we'll go for inside. There you go. There's a strategy, exterior, interior. Mm, mm -hmm. Okay. Right now it is 523, 55 degrees. And coming up next, Maria Carey fans getting a very welcome present this year for Christmas. They get Mike singing the song for them. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, High School Musical is back with its own holiday special. All right, listen up, Mike Osterhage. If all you want for Christmas is something new from Mariah Carey, you're in luck, sir. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> CNN's Rick Damagella has a present for you to unwrap in today's Hollywood Minute. 
Mariah Carey gets festive with a new Christmas show. Mariah Carey's Magical Christmas Special will feature guests including Jennifer Hudson, Ariana Grande, and Tiffany Haddish. The special debuts on Apple TV Plus December 4th. Hey everyone, we've officially entered the most wonderful time of the year. Whether you've been naughty or nice, we've got the perfect gift for you. If you're a fan, that perfect gift is High School Musical The Musical The Holiday Special. Try saying that three times fast. The show will feature a baker's dozen of festive holiday song performances. High School Musical The Musical The Holiday Special debuts on Disney Plus Friday, December 11th. Your hearing is deteriorating rapidly. We'll come back. Till then, Lou, we just keep going, okay? No. Olivia Cook stars opposite Riz Ahmed in the new drama Sound of Metal. Okay. Ahmed learned to play the drums for his role while Cook learned guitar. That was a new skill that I picked up and then immediately dropped afterwards because like anything that I learn, it goes in one ear, stays for the, like it's like cramming for an exam. It's just completely gone after you've had to do it. Sound of Metal opens in limited release Friday and premieres on Amazon Prime Video December 4th. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. That looks amazing. I, I watched the trailer a couple times and if he looks familiar, you may remember him as a character in Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Oh, okay. He was in that one too, but he's no getting wonder. He did rave look familiar. reviews. And why does it have to be High School Musical, the musical, the holiday special? Couldn't they have just let done High School Musical, the holiday special? Yeah, or High School Musical. Should I write Christmas, a letter? Christmas special, holiday special? Yeah. Write a letter? Thank yeah. you. I'll let you prove it, Mike. 528, 55 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, more good news from Pfizer, who says their coronavirus vaccine is even more effective than first thought. Panic buying round two. Seriously, how stores across the, across the nation are reacting to another surge of people buying too many essential items due to the latest coronavirus surge. Hi guys, good morning. It is Thursday, November 19th. We need to go straight to Mike for an update on the fog. It's a big deal for some people this morning. Yeah, basically it is centered and we're kind of the bullseye right here in Bear County and the kind of the metropolitan area. This is a view from uh, the live cam down there at Brook City Base. And also I was just glancing over at some of the Transguide cameras. Nick's going to be talking more about this, but the uh, interchange between 10 and 37 right there at the Y, it looked like the pavement might be a little bit on the damp side. So that's what we're going to have to watch out for this morning. Visible, first of all, temperatures about, uh, well, anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees warmer than what it was yesterday. And those dew point temperatures are about, oh, anywhere from 15, close to 20 degrees above what they were yesterday. Visibility, it is still just uh, roughly a couple of hundred yards out there at the airport. A third of a mile Randolph, half mile Stinson, Port SA, quarter mile in New Braunfels. Zero visibility in Pleasanton, likewise in Beeville. And Gonzalez has some fairly thick fog, and this will continue. Got a little bit showing up around U Valley as well as uh, Kerrville, and this is going to continue to hang around here and probably get thicker in the next um, hour, hour and a half, two hours, right as we approach sunrise. Temperatures out there in the hill country, I mean, it's even warmer than here in town. Upper 50s, both Rock Springs and Fredericksburg, and all that humidity around. Mold is on the low side. This was yesterday's reading. And throughout the rest of today, we'll have the stubborn clouds hanging around here. So sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds throughout the day. 74 degrees where we have holes in the clouds. Going to have some beautiful blue skies with that dry air upstairs. But down here at the surface, it is, surface, it is going to be humid. So you'll definitely feel that 78 degrees. This pattern is going to stick around through the weekend. Some some changes next week, a little subtle one, and then one that's a bit more pronounced toward the middle part of next week. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now, and the big concern is those uh, damp roads. Officer Solis, anything going on? Yeah, Mike, definitely fogging the city, as you said, so please be careful. Uh, make sure you have your headlights, go the speed limit, just drive safely today. All right, here we go. We have uh, this here, lights down. So there's reports here at US Highway 87, just before it hits 410, of all the lights being green right now. Public works has been notified, but you can see it's already causing some very big traffic build up there. They probably put all the lights to just blinking red now, so basically becoming a four way stop. But just keep this in mind. The access road of 410 right there and Rigsby uh, lights are down at this time, and uh, it's going to be a little bit of a delay if you are heading there westbound on Rigsby. All right, drive times here 1604 eastbound from Bandera to I 10 five minutes. And if you're 1604 westbound from IH 35 to 
281. Eight minutes looking good there. And let's do one trans guide here. Let's see what's looking on. 281 at the quarry. Very foggy. Please be careful. Anywhere in the city right now, get to work safely. Mark Steph, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Surveillance video could hold some important clues for San Antonio police as they investigate an overnight robbery. They plan to look at the video from inside a northeast side convenience store. Our Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters with that story. Now, Katrina, was anyone hurt in the robbery? No, not physically hurt. Chances are, though, that that clerk is probably shaken up by what happened very early this morning. Police say there were two robbers who walked into the store at the Exxon station on Nacogdoches near Thousand Oaks. The clerk told officers that one of them walked into the store around 3.30 this morning, pulled out a gun and grabbed the cash. The second robber stood watch at the door. Police were not able to offer a description of them at the time, but they were, seen less, uh, they were last seen running from the business. And again, please do hope to learn more about those robbers from the surveillance video. So far, no arrest, and again, seems like they don't have a lot of information at this point. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 535 right now, 250,000. That's the number of coronavirus deaths here in the United States as of Wednesday. But there is some hope as we get closer to the release of an effective vaccine. CNN's Reed Binion has more. The U.S. reaching a grim milestone in the coronavirus pandemic. More than a quarter of a million people now dead from COVID-19. It is skyrocketing. It is skyrocketing with no real end in sight. President-elect Joe Biden underscoring the horrifying trajectory of the death rate, speaking the same day the U.S. topped 250,000 deaths. That's 10 times the number of people killed in an average year in car crashes. Crashes, strokes, and suicides combined don't claim as many American lives in a full year as the virus has in under 10 months. It's also about six times the average 42,000 people who died from the flu in the years before COVID. 19. Medical experts warning that the death rate will keep soaring if Americans don't get more serious about masks and physical distancing. This is a, a, a milestone, but we blow by these milestones and it's it's really sad. The sobering and tragic new death toll in the U.S. is the highest in the world. Per capita, our numbers are worse than some countries like India with more people and fewer resources. If you look at the death rate in the United States and you compare it to other countries around the world, I mean, we have the most deaths. We have the most deaths. I never imagined that the best we would be able to do in this country was to be the worst in the world. And yet here we are. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Former President Barack Obama breaking records with the release of his memoir, A Promised Land, sold 890,000 copies on its first day of release Tuesday. Penguin Random House says the release is its biggest first day seller. The book is the first of two volumes, covers the first four years of Obama's presidency. The memoir, an account of the trials and tribulations of serving as commander in chief and the division he says his election caused the country. Booksellers expect the memoir will remain a top seller throughout the upcoming holiday season. General Motors expanding its OnStar brand to offer insurance. OnStar has been used as GM's communication system embedded in its vehicles for years. GM says the insurance will be offered to Arizona residents and GM employees by the end of 2020. It will expand to the general public in 2021. OnStar Insurance Services says GM customers who are already subscribed to OnStar will be eligible for those discounts. Well, if you're one of the ones that was upset that the Peanuts gang would only be celebrating the holidays on Apple, TV Plus. There's some good news this morning. Apple and PBS have linked Inc. to deal to show the beloved holiday specials on free broadcast TV. A Charlie Brown Thanksgiving will air on November 22nd, and you can watch A Charlie Brown Christmas on December 13th. They'll also be commercial free. If you have Apple TV Plus, you'll have multiple chances to stream the movies and catch all of Snoopy's shenanigans. So both specials Yay. headed back over the air. That's good news. It is great news. 538, 57 degrees. And still ahead, can you guess what the most popular password in 2020 was? Well, cybersecurity experts say you may want to change it if your password is on the most popular list. And next, nervousness about the recent COVID surge leading to more problems at grocery stores across the nation, including right here in San Antonio. And taking a look back out with live cam, can't see much there. A lot of fog around parts of the city, so be careful out there. We're going to check in with Mike and Nick after the break.
541, the surge in COVID-19 cases has consumers once again rushing to buy hand sanitizer, wipes, and of course, toilet paper. And at CNN's Mandy Gaither reports, grocery stores are continuing to limit some purchases so they can keep the shelves stocked. Who can forget the bare shelves, the empty freezers, and those long lines at the store? Now, with a new COVID-19 surge upon us, we may be on the verge of another wave of shortages and panic buying. Much of the concern is about, and when it comes to certainly panic buying is that uh, people overdo it. Some popular grocery chains are bringing back limits on some products. At Kroger, a limit on bath tissue, paper towels, disinfecting wipes, and hand soap is now in effect. There's a two per customer limit for both in-store and online purchases. Same goes for Food for Less and Ralph's grocery chains. At Publix, a limit on paper towels and toilet paper is also in place, but we're told each individual store sets these quantity limits. We may run out of Charmin, but we'll always have another brand of toilet paper. Same with paper towel, same with Clorox, like with cleaning supplies. So I would just say to everybody, don't panic. There's plenty of product there. The CEO of Stu Leonard's grocery store says they're ready. Unlike last time when companies were caught off guard by the spike in demand and inventory levels were too low. People are a little nervous because they saw what happened back there in, in April and March. Uh, when the shelves, uh, it was real tough to get product, but the industry's taken care of that. And with the holidays upon us, experts say shop early and don't get more than you need. I'm Mandy Gaither reporting. No. I was at Costco on Monday and they have a sign up front that says we're currently out of, and I think it said Lysol and wipes, but there was a mountain of toilet paper and paper towels, and people were being good. They were just grabbing one, that's put in the good. basket, one, put it in the basket. That, that's good. Yeah, so, oh, and hopefully it'll stay that way. I think the run continues, though, at some H-E-B stores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 543, 57 degrees. And do you still use one of the popular passwords to protect your stuff online? We're going to tell you what it is and why you may need to change it My current password is StephRox2020. Of course. Uh, but I'll, I'll probably change it after after that admission. <laughs> And welcome back. It's 546. In your morning consumer headlines, are you still using 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as a password? I hope not. New research shows that many people still are. And according to the internet security company NordPass, which released the list of most popular passwords, the most common one, of course, like we just said, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The second most popular is along the same lines, but the numbers go from 1 to 9. Other passwords in the top 20 include picture 1, password, QWERTY, ABC123, Million2, and I Love You. Other predictable combinations that are popular, 111111 and 123123. Wow, if your password is among the top 200, cybersecurity experts encourage you to change it immediately, especially if it's 123456. Experts say that password has been breached over 23 million times. Mark, you're writing all this down. No, I'm looking for my passwords. I got to. Oh, I stop. Delete a bunch of these. <laughs> you get sick of hearing 10 different versions of White Christmas or Jingle Bells this holiday season. You can add a new tune to your playlist, and this one your pup might like too. Raise the Wolf is billed as the first Christmas single written specifically for our four legged friends. Aww. The song was used, uh, made using scientific research into how dogs interact with sound, and early footage of dogs listening shows they love it. Dog food company Tails.com says a focus group of 25 dogs was played more than 500 sounds to determine their responses. The final result, a co combination of reggae beats with bells, owner's commands, and every dog's favorite sound, squeaky, squeaky toys. Man, that sounds like a lot of fun. Right? <laughs> and if you're home and bored because of COVID-19, you should break out this oldie but goodie for a fun night of family entertainment. Today is National Play Monopoly Day. So the board game is one of the most popular in the world. Monopoly was originally based on a game designed by Elizabeth Maggie in 1902. And recently, sales of the iconic game have skyrocketed as more people look to occupy their time while staying at home amid the pandemic. Now, as you probably know, there are a bunch of different versions, including a brand new Star Wars Mandalorian version. Oh, I didn't know that. And even, of course, a San Antoniopoly that you can still find some places online. So instead of 
Park Place or Boardwalk. It's probably the Alamo and mm -hmm. for, some, something for San Antonio, else. Uh, mm -hmm. The Tower, maybe. Uh, so Tower of the Americas yeah. or or the uh, the uh, Cathedral downtown. The um, San Fernando. San Fernando. Yeah. 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 We it's should possible. check it out. Uh, they're probably really hard to find, though. But I'm going to look it up. Me too. 548, 57 degrees. Let's go ahead and check with Officer Nick Solis. Any problems out there because of the fog? Yeah, right now we're dealing with uh, just uh, fog. No accidents, though. But, however, just want to make sure this is... Lights are down. U.S. Highway 87 at 410. I hope they got them fixed already. Remember, our last take, it was uh, orange there. Moderate to heavy traffic uh, right before you hit 410 on 87. Now it's not there anymore. I'm thinking Public Works might have fixed this problem, and I I hope so because you know how bad 87 can get especially going westbound towards 410. All right trans guy time 37 at Jones right now on the southeast side north and southbound lanes looking good. Look at that little bit of foggy. Please be careful drive safely. Make sure you uh, use those headlights go the speed limit and just be a very defensive driver today and uh, 410 at Evers looking good. Thank you, Nick. Not your typical photo for KSAT Connect. It's all about the composition. It's a beauty. It's cool. That's a very cool picture. Last night's sunset between the Braunfels, Bolverde, GoPro, and time lapse. And hold it out the window. Uh, two hands on the steering wheel, as the officer would also mention. But very cool looking picture. Thank you very much for that one. And uh, not as cool of a picture. This is you know, earlier this morning. We could actually kind of see a bit of the skyline. This is from Brook City Base looking up to the north and somewhere. Oh, about right in there would be the uh, Alamo Dome and obviously the skyline, but the clouds uh, has, have really dropped down and the fog has definitely thickened up. Bernie stage uh, going up by 10 mile and a quarter visibility. Castorville is still pretty good, but watch it because look at that. Port SA is at three quarters of a mile and some of that always likes to sort of drift westward. Pleasanton has improved slightly, but uh, you know, pretty much the, almost the entire metropolitan area is covered with very thick fog. Just a couple of hundred yards visibility out there at the airport. Uvalde is starting to see you're getting a bit more fog there. Beville and Gonzales and Victoria LaGrange. So this is definitely going to be uh, sticking around. And as far as high temperatures yesterday, we made it up to 78 degrees, very warm, and you started to feel the humidity coming back in here. We're going to be just about the same temperature uh, later on today, getting up in the upper 70s, some low 80s around here. But again, a bit more humidity, so you'll notice it somewhat more. And we are about normal uh, high temperature right now is 71 degrees, and we're about obviously anywhere from 10 in some cases, some parts of the area close to 15 degrees above normal. What's interesting Obviously, we're heading in toward the uh, coolest time of the year, which is right after uh, the end of December, just after the first of the year. How the peak of this is not right in the middle. You know, you have the longest day here in June, but you still get that warming process, even though uh, that is the longest day. You still have more sunshine than darkness going into August. And so that's why the hottest time of the year is those first uh, couple of weeks there of August. All right, as far as humidity, yep, it is there and it is going to be sticking around. We'll keep dew points in the uh, 50s and even some uh, 60s going into this afternoon. And you can see that southeast easterly flow is what is continuing to pump that on in here. So that will be the case not only today, but also going into tomorrow. So we'll have as the humidity just pumps on in here overnight, we'll have more fog, maybe some more mist and drizzle around the area. And again, that's the thing to watch out for this morning. Not only the reduced visibility, but damp roads. And you look at uh, what's going on around the country. Everything's up there to the north and sliding from west to east. Nothing around here for the time being. We have I don't even want to call it a couple of fronts next week. Uh, one will move through Sunday into Monday. It's not going to be as potent as what it had initially looked like. We should get a slightly stronger one by the middle part of next week. Today, 74 degrees at noon, already well above the uh, normal high temperature, part of the cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today up to 78. Warm and humid. We'll start off the same tomorrow and keep uh, some clouds around. Morning mist and fog, maybe even a little bit of a uh, Mr. Drizzle over the weekend in the mornings. A shower too is possible Sunday. Maybe a 20% chance of rain on Monday and uh, the next front's going to come through Wednesday, and that should cool us back down to at least a normal low temperature, roughly down in the 40s by Thanksgiving morning. That's good. At least we'll have it for Thanksgiving. Yeah, a little bit of a trim of the humidity by uh, by Thanksgiving. One week away. Oh, crazy year. 553, 57 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, zero, six, six, fireball eight, daily four, six, two, eight, zero, fireball zero. 
Cash five numbers 14, 17, 21, 23, 33, or rather 23, yeah, 23, 33. Lotto, Texas, 19, 22, 27, 36, 39, 46. And mega, rather Powerball. I'll get it right. Four, five, 17, 43, 52. Powerball, five, power play, two. Good luck. Good Thursday morning to you. Coming up here on GMA, our country now reporting more than a quarter of a million American lives lost to the coronavirus. And now a big setback for the nation's largest school district, New York City. Don't know if you heard this, but it has shut its doors to students again. There are some big concerns with Thanksgiving just a week away. But we do have some hope on the horizon, some breaking vaccine news overnight, reporting encouraging results for some of the most vulnerable. That's all coming up right here on GMA. Our KSAC community partners want to help you get your flu shot. If you missed the drive through event last weekend, there's still one more. The next one is Saturday, November 21st from 8 a.m. to noon. It'll be at Texas A&M University, San Antonio. You must have an appointment to receive a flu shot. We have a link to register on KSACcommunity.com. A little less than three minutes till six. San Antonio native Ricardo Chavira has starred on numerous hit shows, but now he's starring in a new Selena series on Netflix. Just ahead on GMSA, we talk about the actor and his role as Abraham Quintanilla and telling a true South Texas story. And Transguide, fog is a problem for many of you this morning. There's I-10 at the Y near downtown. We'll get an update from Nick and Mike coming up. Two robbery suspects on the run after hitting a northeast side gas station. Police say at least one of them is armed. Meanwhile, officers are searching for a shooter on the other side of town. They're trying to figure out who shot a man in the, his backyard on the south side. And taking a look outside with live cams, you can see you cannot see much right now. The humidity is back and so is the fog. We're going to check in with Mike in just a minute. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hey there, good morning. It is Thursday, November 19th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us this morning. One week away from Thanksgiving, but the big thing this morning on our plate is the fog, and there's quite a bit of it, Mike. Yeah, it uh, started off not bad. So I was coming into work. You said you saw a little bit of fog, and then all of a sudden, I mean, it's just like it just dumped right on top of uh, the metropolitan area, and visibilities have really dropped down. Uh, been seeing a lot of kind of damp spots on the roads as well. This is from uh, Brook City Base looking up to the north, and obviously we can't see anything there. Visibility is still being reported at uh, just a, a couple of hundred yards, one sixteenth uh, of a mile out there at the airport. It hasn't improves slightly in Port SA. Now, Castorville, you're starting to see hints of fog. Same thing in Hondo, so that's going to start to thicken up. Uh, mile, or excuse me, third of a mile, Randolph, and a mile and three quarters, Stinson. So in some places, it's gotten just a little bit better. Bernie Stage has now dropped down, so that fog is continuing to kind of work its way off to the, the west a little bit more and up into portions of the hill country, and then there is plenty of it uh, in some of our eastern counties as well. And this will be sticking around, and it, in places will continue to get thicker in the next, uh, say, hour or even couple of hours we'll be dealing with it throughout the morning commute. Temperatures all around the area are much, much warmer than what they were yesterday. Del Rio right now is at 60. We had some freezing temperatures out in the hill country in the past couple of mornings. Mold is on the low side. We're not going to be seeing anything freezing for a while around here. 56 uh, temperatures basically will be about steady wherever you are this morning as far as thermometer readings and we'll be dealing with some of the fog and those stubborn clouds throughout the rest of the morning and then a few clouds left over at noon 74 degrees already above the normal high temperature and we're going to be topping off at 78. Same thing as yesterday difference being You'll probably notice more humidity out there. We're going to do it all over again tomorrow. The weekend's going to stay warm and humid. Couple of fronts next week. I wouldn't get excited about the first one, but uh, the second one should get us uh, well, some better weather by Thanksgiving. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solise. And we got fog, we got damp roads. Is that causing problems? Not too many problems, Mike, but you know, definitely uh, if you are driving, please be careful today in the fog. Use those headlights, go the speed limit, and just please be careful driving. Get to work safely and wear your seatbelt. All right, here we go. Still dealing with this. Now, I, I haven't talked about it in a little bit, 
but it's still there. Uh, the southbound I-35 at FM 482 near New Braunfels. It's a 18 wheeler breakdown there on the right shoulder, um, not causing traffic builder, but you will pass this if you are coming from New Braunfels southbound towards San Antonio and that or in surrounding areas. All right, drive times here 151 eastbound from 1604 to 99 minutes. And if you're 90 eastbound from 1604 to 35, 11 minutes. So good times there if you're going down 151. All right, trans guide time. Let's see what we got. 35 at Powell flowing smoothly both north and southbound lanes. Traffic a bit moderate, but good for this time. 35 in Pine. We had a stalled vehicle there all morning. Getting that vehicle off the right shoulder and 151 and 410 where we had those drive times looking good. Mark Steph, back to you. Thank you very much, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for suspects involved in a robbery at a northeast side gas station. Police say it happened around 3.30 this morning at an Exxon at Nacogdoches and Thousand Oaks. They say two men went into the 7-Eleven and robbed the cashier. Both of them ran away. The store manager and SAPD are reviewing security camera footage to see if they recognize those suspects. One man is in the hospital this morning after being shot at his home. It happened around 10 last night at a home on South Florida's near West Harlan on the city's south side. Police say the homeowner was arguing with someone in the backyard, and that's when the suspect pulled out a gun and shot him. Police say the bullet went through both of the victim's thighs. The shooter ran off, and police are still trying to track down that person. Police are also searching for a shooter over on the east side. Call came in around 9 last night on Creekmore Drive near South WWY. They see someone in a gray Chevy Impala fired a gun out of a car window in the parking lot of the Iron Horse apartment complex. The victim drove down the street to call for help. He was then taken to Bamsey with a gunshot wound to the leg. A building is in need of repair this morning after a car drove through a wall. It happened on the south side around 2 this morning on Pleasanton near Southwest Military. Police say a driver swerved to avoid someone walking in the street but crashed into the corner of that building. Nobody was hurt and firefighters boarded up that hole overnight. To the pandemic now, local health officials reporting 366 new cases of COVID here in Bear County and three new deaths. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the seven day moving average now at 295 cases per day. He says 435 people are in the hospital, 55 people uh, being admitted in the past 24 hours. 139 are in ICU, 73 on ventilators. Currently, 68 patient, patients here in San Antonio are from El Paso. Harlandale ISD will no longer require students to attend class on the upcoming Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. The district originally switched the holiday with Election Day to help keep the distance between students and voters during the pandemic. But that decision was met with some backlash. San Antonio's NAACP president says he feared the move would set a precedent for requiring school on a day that was meant for both remembrance and community service. We commend them on their decision. We think it was the right decision to make. Um, and I, I think, you know, it, it shows their goodwill and their good intent. That, and it shows that they did not, it was not their intent to do something that was hurtful to a particular group. It was simply that uh, it was really the low hanging fruit, if you will, and was easy to do at this point in time. The district said it found a new solution. The end of the year will be extended by a day. The last day of school there now Monday, June 7th. Two military hospitals in the Alamo City participating in the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine trial. Brook Army Medical Center and Wilford Hall Ambulatory Surgical Center among five Department of Defense locations chosen to participate in the trial. Study needs a total of 1000 people to run and so far 100 have volunteered. Researchers are looking for people at higher risk of getting COVID-19. They'll have a blood draw, they'll have a, a nasopharyngeal sample uh, obtained, and they will also receive either the investigational vaccine or placebo. The team will monitor participants over the course of a two year period. President Donald Trump's legal team is continuing to challenge election results in several battleground states, but his campaign is running out of time and options. Meanwhile, judges around the country struggling to see the legal merit in some of the president's lawsuits. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest. President Trump's chances to challenge the election appear to be dwindling by the hour. A judge in Arizona says he'll rule on a case this morning that could delay the state's certification of ballots. Republicans are requesting a redo of a hand recount in Maricopa County, the state's largest. 
But the judge expressing skepticism before the ruling, reportedly saying he's, quote, having a hard time understanding why the lawsuit was filed more than two weeks after the election. Also today, Georgia will announce results of its statewide audit. So far, uncounted votes have been found in four counties, netting President Trump more than 1,000 votes, but not nearly enough to overtake President-elect Biden's lead in that state. But we have not have enough evidence to say that they reached the level of 13,000 or so. And as President Trump refuses to concede, more Republicans are now calling for him to grant Biden access to intelligence briefings. The president is contesting the election, and I would urge him to give intel briefings to, uh, to Joe Biden. Staffers at the Health and Human Services Department have been ordered not to talk to Biden's team and to report any outreach that's been made until the General Services Administration officially determines who won the election. Biden says Trump's delaying of the transition could set back efforts to fight the coronavirus and distribute a vaccine. There's a whole lot of things that are just we just don't have available to us, which unless it's made available soon, we're going to be behind by weeks or months. That warning coming as Biden heard emotional stories from frontline health workers. Do you know that I have not been tested yet and I have been on the front lines in the ICU since February? You're kidding me. No. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, a new park is now open to the public in downtown San Antonio. The San Antonio Business Journal reporting that Weston Urban's new park is right next to the Frost Tower. It is geared for professionals with spaces for food trucks and public Wi-Fi. The journal also reporting it will be able to host movie screenings, public events, and socially distanced meetings. You can read more about it right now on KSET.com. Just about 10 minutes past the hour, 58 degrees. And the Spurs had their highest pick in decades in yesterday's NBA draft. We're going to see who the newest player on the team later on. The custodial staff at Sam's Clubs now have a futuristic look. We'll see how robots are being used to help keep those big box stores clean after the break. And taking a look out with live cam, please be careful out there. You can see how foggy it is this morning. We're going to check in with Mike about the fog and we're going to check with Nick about the roads after the break. Buying groceries has looked a lot different in 2020, but if you're a Sam's Club member, your in-store experience is about to look a whole lot different no matter where you live. We're talking robots. Soon, every Sam's Club will have a robot to scrub the store floors. In partnership with BrainCorp, an artificial intelligence company, the membership-only warehouse chain will distribute 372 new autonomous floor scrubbers to all their stores this coming fall. Now, Sam's Club, which is owned by Walmart, has already deployed hundreds of these robotic scrubbers. Scrubbers. So with the addition of 372 new robots, the company will soon have a scrubber in each of their locations. It'll also implement one of the Brain Corp's accessories that will allow them to analyze shelf inventory. This move comes at a time when shoppers are looking for grocery experiences that involve less and less human contact. As grocers look for ways to reduce pressure on store workers and increase efficiency. Many grocers have found that their needs are shifting with more shoppers stocking up in stores and ordering groceries online. They believe robots and artificial intelligence offer solutions that can help bring down costs and improve store operations. Sam Club is not the first of its kind to implement this kind of technology in the store. Walmart wants its store employees to help customers instead of mopping floors and unloading boxes. So it increasingly is turning to robots to fill those tasks. Last year, Walmart announced by February of 2021, they expect to have autonomous floor scrubbers in 1,860 of its more than 4,700 stores. It will also have robots that scan shelf inventory at 350 stores and there will be robots at 1700 stores that automatically scan boxes as they come off delivery trucks and sorts them by department onto conveyor belts. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. We are seeing some delays on some San Antonio highways. Yeah, a lot of fog out there. How are things looking now, Officer Nick Solis? Uh, right now, things are still looking okay, but because of the fog, yeah, it's got some more moderate to heavier traffic than usual. All right, well, we have some traffic here. It's going to be a 410 southbound going towards uh, 35 there. Trying to see if there's an accident. I believe there is, but I think it's by the train tracks and it's not blocking traffic, so that could just be there. Some heavy traffic uh, accident just came out here, 35 and 1604 near Near, uh, Selma get you more information on that when I can. All right, here we go. Trans guy 410 at Cherry Ridge traffic flowing smoothly. There still that's good. US 90 and IH 35 same looking good there. Both uh, lanes and 281 in Nakoma near the airport. 
That's looking good as well. Fog's still there. Please be careful. Wear your seatbelt. Now, fog on most of those cameras, but it seems like people are still just speeding right along this morning. <laughs> yeah, they're confident. in a hurry to get to work, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah, and watch out for the you know damp roads too. But the interesting thing though is not everywhere is it real, real thick. You know, right. at the airport, it's a couple hundred yards maybe the visibility, but you know, in some places there's hardly any fog to speak of. But it is going to continue to stick around for the next couple of hours. Uh, allow yourself maybe just a little bit of extra time as you uh, head on out this morning. And as far as come on, come on, are you going to do it for me? Nope. The little bus is not going to run. Anyway, take a look at uh, this picture. I love that shot, the beautiful sunset. And then there's some of the farmers working their fields, getting them ready for uh, spring planting. Very cool looking picture. Thank you very much for uh, that one. And boy, this one sure looks a whole lot different than the past couple of days when we could actually see the skyline and we had a you know, beautiful sunrise the past couple of days. But uh, the fog is definitely thick. That was from Brook City Base looking kind of up to the north to northwest over at uh, downtown. Visibility, Bernie Stage, New Braunfels, quarter mile. A third of a mile Randolph and still just like I said, a couple of hundred yards out there at the airport. And Stinson is right now at uh, just, uh, well, three quarters of a mile visibility. We're starting to see a little more fog work its way off to the west as well. Uvalde, you're now down to four miles, some fog around Teresa Springs and then off to the east. So it, it's centered right on San Antonio Bear County, but it looks to be kind of spreading out a little bit more as the morning rolls on. Then you go upstairs in the atmosphere. We got some very dry air up there, and that means when the clouds do eventually start to break up a little bit, you're gonna have those beautiful blue skies out there mixed in with some clouds. We'll still keep some around, kind of like a situation what we had yesterday. And then you look at the water vapor around the country. Yes, we've got dry air upstairs. Here's the moisture aloft, and what you can really take away from this too is notice how everything is moving. Keep emphasizing this straight west to east. That's a zonal air pattern. With that situation, you don't really get any good storm systems to develop. You like to see that really, really pronounced roller coaster in the upper level steering winds, and you don't see any extremes with temperatures. And a lot of times for us, we stay on the above normal side, which is the situation that we're in right now. So there's the upper level steering winds, basically just straight west to east, and nothing really changes all that much going on into the weekend. Sunday into Monday, we've got that little bit of a front trying to move through, but that one is almost not even worth talking about anymore. It will trim temperatures a little bit going into the first part of the week, but then by the middle part of the week, there is going to be a little bit better front moving on through. Not fantastic, not a huge blast, but at least what it's going to do for Thanksgiving, it looks like is take temperatures and from above normal and at least put them back down to normal readings by about one week from today. 74 at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature today up to 78. Same temperatures yesterday, but a little bit more humidity, so you're definitely going to notice it. And then as the humidity keeps pumping on in here, we will see more clouds and some fog and mist tomorrow morning, maybe even some, um, well, a little sprinkly showers starting off uh, Saturday and Sunday and a couple of showers Sunday into Monday possible. Don't get really excited about that. And then that next front should move through Wednesday to at least get us back to normal by Thanksgiving. Oh, we're looking over your shoulder at some of those transcat cams. It is soupy out there in some spots. Yes, yeah, too. and again, can't got to emphasize damp roads too. And you said again, you said it's not everywhere. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Be careful. 619, 58 degrees. And the husband of actress Lori Loughlin reporting to prison today in the wake of the college admission scandal. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Add some thrill to your wish list at the Season of Audi sales event. 
Feed a healthy lifestyle with pure protein. High protein, low sugar, tastes great. High protein, low sugar, so good. High protein, low sugar, mmm, birthday cake. Pure protein, the best combination to help you stay fit. How about new? No. Uh uh-uh, uh, no way. Come on, no. 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 Only Discover has no annual fee on any card. In this morning's GMA First Look, actress Lori Loughlin's fashion designer husband, Massimo Giannulli, set to report to jail for his role in the Varsity Blues college admission scandal. Are you going to fight these charges? The 57-year-old is the fashion designer behind the popular Massimo clothing brand. He was sentenced to five months behind bars and ordered to pay a quarter million dollar fine after pleading guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit fraud. The couple accused of paying half a million dollars to Varsity Blues alleged mastermind Rick Singer to get their two daughters, Olivia Jade and Isabella, into USC, staging them both as rowers to recruit them for the team, though neither ever participated in the sport. On Tuesday, two days before reporting to jail, Giannulli was spotted in Beverly Hills, sporting a new look, the shaved head and growing beard, a far cry from his previously clean-cut image. And coming up at 7 a.m., new details on what he's facing in prison. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. Apple's reached a settlement over its older iPhones. The company's agreed to pay $113 million to settle state claims that pers- purposefully slowed down older iPhones. Apple says it slowed down the phones to preserve battery life, but many states claim Apple was trying to force many Apple customers into buying new- newer generation phones. And just in time for the holidays, Google Maps has issued a handy guide detailing the best and worst times to avoid crowds in public places. So example, Mondays at 8 a.m. are best for socially distant grocery shopping. Saturdays from noon to 3 are the worst. Wonder Woman fans gearing up for an unprecedented debut. The sequel will be released in theaters and it will stream on HBO Max at the same time starting this coming Christmas Day. Wonder Woman 1984 was supposed to come out in June, but was obviously sidelined by the COVID-19 pandemic. And this blue ring nebula has confused astronomers for 16 years until yesterday. That is, NASA discovered what appeared to be a star surrounded by an ultraviolet ring in 2004, about 6,300 light years away. Now, scientists say it is the result of a never before seen phase that occurs after two stars collide. They believe that a sun-like star crashed into and consumed a smaller star orbiting it thousands of years ago. Well, the Spurs had their highest draft pick in 23 seasons since taking Tim Duncan at number one overall in 1997. With the 11th pick in the 2020 draft last night, the Silver and Black selected Devin Vassell. He's a 6'6 shooting guard out of Florida State. Analysts say he is a two-way player. He averaged more than 12 points a game and shot 42% from three-point range in college. But he's also a good defender, which is something the Spurs cherish. In the second round, Spurs took Trey Jones, a point guard out of Duke. And we were listening to a little interview with uh, yes. Devin Vassell earlier. And he is sweet and, and as humble as could be. And he said joining the Spurs is a dream come true and a blessing. We are so excited. He looks very down to earth as well. He does. Going to be a good fit for our San Antonio Spurs. Mm-hmm. Time now is 626 and 58 degrees. U.S. dealing with a surge in coronavirus cases and states are now looking at more extreme measures to try to curb the spread of the virus. A new show about Selena coming to Netflix soon. And in our next half hour, we're going to talk to one of the stars about being a part of the production. It'll be none other than Ricardo Chavira. And then checking the roads with Trans Guide. Lots of fog out there and almost all of these Trans Guide pictures. We'll get an update from Nick and Mike right around the corner. shift came with some unwelcome surprises for a convenience store clerk. That worker faced two armed robbers. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. More than 250,000 American lives now lost to COVID-19. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze, the latest on the coronavirus emergency coming up. And outside with live cam, if you're just now joining us, we've got some pretty thick fog in different parts of the city right now. It seemed to get worse throughout the last uh, couple of hours. We'll see if that's the case right now with Mike Osterhage, but coming up. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, November 19th. Thanks for joining us. Mike is here with the latest, and uh, what is the latest out of the National Weather Service, Mike? 
Just talking about the fog out there. Uh, one thing that's interesting, I, I've switched cameras now. Obviously, this looks uh, kind of the same, but this is the, uh, the camera over there at uh, 10 at 410 on top of that building. And uh, you can see maybe a couple of lights in the foreground, but also uh, this is almost trying to look over. You can see it's slightly darker up here. It's almost trying to look over some of those low clouds that have uh, sort of moved on in here. And so we'll probably once the sun comes up, maybe even be able to make that out a little bit better. But obviously it is a very low layer of clouds because you go upstairs in the atmosphere and we've got some really dry air up there. Temperature stands at 58 degrees and both of these numbers have been going up over the past uh, couple of hours. So we've continued to get that moisture getting pumped on in here from the uh, southeast. No wind really to speak of and got all the, the good ingredients to get this fog to form up. Visibility is still hovering at just a couple of hundred yards out there. Uh, Randolph is at a third of a mile. Port SA has improved slightly. Stinson, Pleasanton, a lot of fog. And you go out 90, you're going to run into some of that, as well as up 35, out 10, in toward the hill country. And a good chunk of the area, U Valley is now down to just one mile visibility. So it is uh, continuing to thicken up in places. Mold is on the uh, light side, and the updated count is going to be coming out in about uh, 45 minutes or so. So again, warm, humid. We've got some fog around the area. And warm and humid today. We'll have sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds today. Today, about the same temperatures yesterday, 5, 10 degrees above normal up in the upper 70s, but you'll definitely notice it. And that's going to be the situation over the weekend. Maybe a little sprinkly shower here on Sunday, perhaps a slightly better chance of rain on Monday. As far as any fronts next week, the one that we were talking about coming through Monday, it's not looking that good anymore. Maybe by the middle part of next week. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solis. And despite all this fog in the damp roads, haven't had much going on this morning. Yeah, still relatively quiet, Mike, other than a little bit of a few pockets of traffic here. But yeah, still relatively quiet for the weather that we're having right now, this fog. So let's look here. 35 North, if you're going IH 35 North, northbound towards Northeast Loop 410. We got a little bit of heavy traffic there and then still southbound on Southwest Loop 410 going towards 35 South. We still have some traffic. Um, flowing uh, issues there. So just making sure uh, you give yourself some ample time to leave if you're heading those directions. All right, I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of uh, FM 46 to 1604. You got a 14 minute ride and I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to downtown 14 minutes. A little bit high and moderate still a little bit higher than usual. OK, I-35 South to Maine looking good. 410 at Fredericksburg flowing smoothly. We got 410 at Evers looking good. And we'll do one more here. 10 at the Y. A little foggy there. Be careful. Wear your seatbelt, but still looking good. Mark, Steph, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Two men who walked into a convenience store overnight were not looking for coffee. San Antonio police say they robbed the business. It happened on the northeast side at Nacogdoches and Thousand Oaks. Our Katrina Weber has a live report from Public Safety Headquarters. Now, Katrina, did police offer a description of the robbers? No, they really didn't share anything because they say they didn't have a good description. They plan to look at surveillance video, though, to try to learn more. And what police do know is that the clerk says that uh, there were two men. One of them walked in with a gun around 3.30 this morning and grabbed cash from the register while the other stood guard at the door. Both of them then ran off. The police do not know much about the robbers. They had a pretty vague description from the clerk, but again, they are hoping to get a good look at those robbers by way of the store surveillance video. And they told us that the clerk was not physically hurt during the robbery. Reporting live from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Johns Hopkins University reporting that more than 250,000 people have now died here in the U.S. due to the coronavirus. And a growing list of states are putting new restrictions in place as hospitals are starting to be overwhelmed. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest. Good morning. The COVID tracking project reports there are a record 79,000 Americans currently hospitalized with COVID-19 and the daily death toll is at its highest level since May. One quarter of a million American lives now lost to COVID-19 and the pandemic showing no signs of slowing down. Right now we are in a absolutely dangerous situation. The U.S. averaging 160,000 new cases a day in the past week, while hospitalizations remain at an all-time high. Frontline workers trying not to give up hope. Having my patient call their family member before we intubate for the last time, and then the silence that follows after is, it's really hard. 
Across the nation, new restrictions. New York City announcing it will close public schools. States like Oregon, Michigan and Minnesota issuing new limitations on businesses and public gatherings as governors urge Americans to rethink Thanksgiving plans. You know what love is on Thanksgiving? I love you so much that I'm not going to see you. In much needed good news, Pfizer announced it will apply for emergency authorization for its COVID-19 vaccine in the coming days. Once they are widely deployed, it's gonna make a huge difference in bringing the pandemic under control. President-elect Biden is warning President Trump's refusal to start the transition process could delay efforts to distribute a vaccine. The Trump administration is still refusing to share critical information about the pandemic response. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. 636, Georgia election officials are expected to release a report of the hand tally of the presidential race today. The hand recount of about 5 million votes started due to a new state law, not because of suspected problems with the state's results or an official recount request. Joe Biden currently leads the president by about 14,000 votes. The report is expected to be released by midday today, and Georgia's deadline to certify the election results is tomorrow. President Donald Trump now turning his focus to Wisconsin, ordering a partial recount. The recount in Milwaukee and Dane counties will cost $3 million. The counties consist of the cities of Milwaukee and Madison, both Democratic strongholds in the state. The president says there were irregularities in the voting in those counties. However, Wisconsin election officials say there is no evidence of wrongdoing. Good morning, consumers. The FDA has a new way of getting information out about outbreaks of foodborne illnesses. They say they'll start publishing a weekly update on all outbreak cases they're investigating. Before this, Americans waited for public health advisories or even recalls to learn about concerns related to food products. FDA hopes the new reports will allow the public to learn about outbreaks earlier and more frequently. Despite the pandemic, Americans are still planning to spend hundreds of dollars on Thanksgiving dinner. A new survey from Lending Tree, an online loan marketplace, found that Americans will spend an average of $475. That's up from $310 in 2019. One reason people say Thanksgiving might be more expensive is because they're making up for the holidays they missed earlier in the year. General Motors will now offer car insurance. The company announced it will run through its OnStar program. OnStar has been GM's communication system in vehicles for years. GM says the insurance will be offered to Arizona residents and GM employees by the end of 2020. It will expand to the general public in 2021. OnStar insurance services say GM customers who are already subscribed to OnStar will be eligible for discounts. And the heads of America's seven biggest airline companies are renewing their calls for more federal help. In a letter to congressional leaders, they are asking for another round of aid before the end of the year. They say it is necessary to keep employees on payroll due to the coronavirus slowdowns. Earlier this year, Congress gave the airlines a $25 billion aid package. Apple and PBS have inked a new deal to show the beloved Charlie Brown holiday specials on broadcast TV after all. A Charlie Brown Thanksgiving will air coming up on November 22nd, and you can watch Charlie Brown Christmas on December 13th. They'll also be commercial free. If you have Apple TV Plus, you'll have multiple chances to stream the specials and catch all of Snoopy's shenanigans. That's good. More people will get to see it. There were a lot of online petitions about that <laughs> being pulled off the air and going yes. straight to Apple TV Plus. So they listened. Yep. So on PBS, check it out. 639, 58 degrees. And Netflix coming out with a new series about Selena in December. After the break, we're going to hear from one of the stars on the show about the role and Latino representation in the show. Welcome back to GMSA. San Antonio native Ricardo Chavira has starred on numerous hit shows, including Desperate Housewives, Scandal, The Santa Clarita Diet, and Jane the Virgin. And he's also starring in the new Selena series on Netflix, which begins streaming on December 4th. RJ Marquez spoke to the actor about his role as Abraham Quintanilla and telling a true South Texas story. Ricardo Chavira has been acting in TV and movies for nearly 20 years, but his current role, playing Abraham Quintanilla in the upcoming Selena series on Netflix, has taken on a special significance. Telling the story of Selena and her family's struggle and success was something he identifies closely with. When I read, I mean, I remember reading it and I started crying. You know, because it was like they, that was informing about my life. Chavira was hesitant at first about taking on the role of Abe Quintanilla, but he watched interviews, pictures and old clips and realized Abraham's presence was already a part of his life. I see this 
you know, patriarchal Mexican-American man everywhere in San Antonio. He, he resembles and acts like my father, like, like my tío José, like my tío Fabián. Chavira also knew the production would be special after learning it would be led by Jaime Davila, the founder of Campanario Entertainment. He's really got this great mission statement for, you know, trying, you know, Latinos telling Latino stories. And it was fully realized on this on this series. Being authentic to Selena's story and her family's roots is something that Chavira thought was possible because the series has Mexican-American writers and producers who are from South Texas. He hopes that in the future, more Latinos get the opportunity in TV, movies, media, entertainment, or art because the Quintanilla family story is a universal one. This is the story of, you know, an American family trying to be successful, of an American family trying to get that dream for themselves. Throughout his career, Chavira has seen more steps being taken by Latinos, but it has ultimately been a long game. We didn't have enough representation behind the camera as producers, as writers, as directors, and we're seeing more of that now. We need more. Representation matters. We need more. Chavira said he is positive the true and genuine parts of South Texas and the Quintanilla family will shine through in this Selena series. I had to be um, very caring about it. And I, and I just, I wanted to make sure that I did my absolute best work possible uh, to make sure that I was representing this story, but also our region. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Right now it is 645. Let's go ahead and check in with Officer Nick Solis. Still a lot of fog out there. A lot of fog, Steph, but it is quiet, re uh, re relatively quiet out in the city right now. No accidents to report. Traffic is flowing smoothly. Thank you everyone for driving safely out there this morning. Uh, let's look at 35 at Powell here. Look at this uh, north and southbound lanes at 35 flowing good. 35 at Pine. That same uh, stalled vehicle there on the right shoulder still has not been removed. And uh, 151 and 410. Things are looking good all around the city. I'm glad. Just be careful. Remember, wear your seatbelt and drive safely today, especially in the fall. So proud of Mark. Very close to his goal. $40 away from my $1,200 yes. goal yes. as of November 19th. Not too shabby. Thank you, everyone that has <laughs> donated. Keep those donations coming. Everybody's on the leaderboard now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a whole bunch of folks that have been donating. In the last couple of days, I think I've received two donations of $100 oh, or wow. more, but we've had donations awesome. as small as $10 and every little bit counts, of course. Yeah, What's the grand total for everybody? Grand total is, I think, over 3,000 right wow. now. Wow. Well, I could Good. be wrong, but I'll, I'll double check that, but I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. So we were at 2,500. I don't know. Right, we were at 2,500. <laughs> it's uh, gone pretty quickly. No, because we were talking about a, a couple of days ago, yeah. and which was roughly halfway point of the month. So we were saying maybe or hopefully we could double that by the, the end of the month. Well, that so. would be nice. And, of course, it's going to take me a minute to look this up. So do your thing, and then I'll, I'll report back. How about that? Please donate to you know have somebody else jump ahead of Mark. So. <laughs> have Nick jump ahead of Mark. Hit, I hit, would hit, love hit, for hit, somebody hit. to pass me up. I know. Yeah. Ah. And, and it all goes for a very good cause. I mean, it's our little, you know, fun to have the competition here, but it all, the whole pot goes into 3143 raised. 3143 dollars awesome. raised so far. Thank you very much for that. All right. Really cool looking picture. There is the waxing crescent moon, Saturn and Venus in the night sky. And we should see uh, enough uh, clear skies tonight to be able to do a little bit of uh, celestial gazing. Now here's uh, the camera over there 10 at 410. On top of the building, uh, gosh, I can't even tell where the interchange is uh, as of right now, somewhere over in this direction. But uh, very low clouds, a lot of thick fog in places, still just uh, uh, maybe a couple of hundred yards, if that, out there at the airport. Half mile visibility, Port of Say, that's dropped back down. Now zero visibility, heading out 10 in toward Bernie. So again, this is a, one of those fluid situations in Castroville. You now start to start seeing some pretty thick fog out there. So this will continue on for probably the, the next couple of hours. Don't have any advisories posted right now. A lot of fog around Uvalde. That's dropped down considerably going down uh, to the southeast as well. So most of it, I mean, it was right here in the center. It's kind of spread, if you will. Watch it around Hondo, too, because you'll probably start to see some of this fog in the next uh, maybe half hour, 45 minutes. The dew point temperatures have gone up about 15, 20, 30 degrees. 
higher dew points in Kerrville as compared to this time yesterday. So all that humidity just started pumping on in here. That's why we've got all the, the fog and mist and drizzle. Roads are damp. Watch that. Dew points stay high through the weekend. Come down just a little bit on Monday. This front coming through Monday is not as significant looking as it has been the past couple of days, but does now look like we have a little bit more of a potent front coming through on Wednesday of next week. And that should, because we're going to stay well above normal between now and then, but that should at least put temperatures back down to normal. So what it's looking like right now is on Thanksgiving morning, we'll be starting off in the upper 40s and then getting right to about 70 for a high temperature later on the day, what the 30 year average temperatures are for that date. Most all of the action is way up there to the north of us, and that's why we've got these above normal temperatures and why we're not seeing anything as far as any big rainmakers around here. 74 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today gets up to 78. Same number as yesterday, but more humidity, so should probably uh, notice that 78 a lot more. We'll do the same thing again tomorrow morning. Mist, drizzles, and patchy fog. Over the weekend, maybe a little, you know, kind of a sprinkly shower, perhaps a a shower to Sunday, a couple more Monday. I think that's being a little maybe overly optimistic, but uh, the next front will move through here on Wednesday. Unfortunately, not a lot of rain at all in the forecast. Mm, but not too bad overall. No, just kind of humid up until uh, about Thanksgiving. So. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 650, 58 degrees. And many people haven't seen their grandparents in months because of the pandemic, but when it's safe to return, there's one thing you can do to help them get back into the swing of things. That's right, tomorrow on GMSA, why experts say dancing with a grandparent can increase their mood and even prevent dementia. Outside with live cam right now, see how things are looking now at uh, 10 till the sun is trying to come up, but you would never really know it. It's just kind of brightening up the fog over the Alamo City. We'll be right back. Good Thursday morning to you coming up here on GMA. Our country now reporting more than a quarter of a million American lives lost to the coronavirus. And now a big setback for the nation's largest school district, New York City. Don't know if you heard this, but it has shut its doors to students again. There are some big concerns with Thanksgiving just a week away. But we do have some hope on the horizon, some breaking vaccine news overnight, reporting encouraging results for some of the most vulnerable. That's all coming up right here on GMA. Two men make off with the money from a northeast side convenience store, leaving behind nothing but fear. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say the store clerk told them that one of the men had a gun. The worker says one of the robbers walked into the store at the Exxon station at Nacogdoches and Thousand Oaks around 3.30 this morning. Police say that he pulled out a gun, grabbed the cash and ran. But the whole time, the second robber stood watch at the door. Police mentioned that they did not have a good description of either one of those robbers, but they plan to look at surveillance video to learn more. And they said the store clerk was not hurt. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Five till seven. A lot of fog out there. Any more problems on the road, Officer Nick Solis? Steph, no, right now we're still looking good. Now there's been minor accidents, but they're not affecting the highways everywhere. It's not gonna affect your morning commute. Just uh, this stalled vehicle 35 at Pine, still there. 151 and 410 looks good. Uh, that's starting to clear up there. And uh, let's see what else we got. 35 and 37 downtown. Traffic flowing smoothly. Thank you everyone for driving safely. Mike? Yeah, and it really depends on where you are as far as how thick the fog is. Now this picture almost looks like it is uh, kind of the low clouds have thinned a little bit. Granted, this camera's on top of a building out there at 10 and 410, but uh, a lot of fog around and maybe just about 100 yards visibility out at the airport down to just a third of a mile now Port S.A. again. So, it, you know, these numbers keep going back and forth. A lot of it, especially on the northwest side of town, just be very careful again with the damp roads and uh, much of the area is covered with fog as of right now. No advisories, though. 74 at noon, 78 for a high temperature later on today and plenty of humidity. Nick, Mike, thank you guys. Thank you so much and be careful out there and we'll see you back here at 9. Have a great day, everyone.